Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. For 2024, Volkswagen has given their Atlas Cross Sport a pretty significant refresh. It's got new styling inside and out. It's got a new engine under the hood and quite a few other little things that have really improved the game. So we're gonna have a good look at it inside and out, take it for a drive, and then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. All right, my friends, let's talk about what they've done for 2024. They have restyled the Atlas and the Atlas Cross Sport. Now, the Atlas is a three-row SUV, almost full size, although it's still considered technically a mid-size crossover SUV that would compete against the Ford Explorer, the Nissan Pathfinder, and so on. Although, with the Cross Sport, a little bit different. While it rides on the same chassis, it has the same width, and from behind the wheel, the same size, it actually has quite a bit shorter overhang in the back because we don't have to accommodate the third row. It's only a two row SUV. It's about five inches shorter. And if you look at the roof line, it's about two and a half inches lower. It's a bit more of a four door coupe, let's say. And so it's good for people that don't need that third row. Maybe they don't have a big family. Maybe they're single, maybe they're empty nesters. Uh, maybe you're younger and you just don't need all of that, right? So the styling for 2024 is really where the news is. They have redesigned the face, new headlights, a new signature light bar that goes all the way across. These LED headlights are super powerful at night. The grill, a nice gloss black finish, and down in the lower fascia, an X design that is unique to the Crossport. So they've differentiated the Crossport from the larger Atlas three row in that way. And the logo is actually LED backlit at night. So it's pretty cool when you see this thing coming down the street. The wheels on this one are 20 inch alloys and they have a nice 255 section rubber on them, pretty wide tires. And as you come down the side, you can see that this color Kingfisher blue metallic really lights up in the sun. I like this color quite a bit, I have to admit. Up at the top, chrome roof rails, and this one also has a panoramic roof with an opening front section at the back. This has a little bit of a redesign back there as well, a nice big chrome strip that says Atlas across it, new LED taillights. This is, of course, a power opening rear hatch. Looking down at the rear bumper, they've noodled the design just a little bit. There is a trailer hitch receiver down there. This has a 5,000 pound towing capacity as tested. And the fake exhausts, well, they're still there, but a little bit more nuanced. It's kind of a suggested fake exhaust. So while it still kind of irks me a little bit, um, I'm not quite as put off by them as I used to be. The interior of the Atlas is really where the big news is for 2024 when it comes to restyling and upgrading. They have made a sea change in here. And I say that because in previous Atlas reviews, one of the areas that I complained about the most was the cheap, interior that Volkswagen has been doing for some time. Well, they heard that from a lot of people. So they've upgraded the materials in here everywhere you look, everywhere you touch. There is this beautiful soft stitch trim across the dash, the door panels, the console, anywhere your body, your hands, your arms touch is now a padded soft stitch material that looks very nice. They've also added premium trims across the dash, including this beautiful carbon fiber like panel that actually has LED backlighting. And there's also ambient backlighting throughout with almost unlimited colors that you can adjust. Right now it's on sort of a bluish purple and you can adjust that to just about any color you want. And that color flows into the infotainment system and the instrument cluster so it's all tied together and you can also customize that in different ways the seats in this are leather power seats both for the driver and the passenger passenger now has a height adjustment i find these seats very comfortable as i sit here i have been just absolutely coddled in these seats this week they're very comfortable they're very supportive they're not quite like the gti sports seats but they're not far from it and volkswagen just has always done some pretty nice seats for the driving enthusiast. And this has a very nicely done steering wheel with paddle shifters on it, well done controls and ahead of me, a digital cockpit, which used to be an upgrade, now standard across the board. Also very customizable, as you can see, I happen to have the native nav map on it because I like the way that looks. You can also have that nav screen over here 
if you want that. Also, a large screen added in the center, and some of the controls for the HVAC and other things have been replaced by the screen. We'll talk about that when we get to the user experience part of our talk here. Down on the center console, a nice little openable cubby here. You can put your phone down there. There's a wireless charger. There's also ports to plug things in. Cup holders off to the side, and then in the center here, an electronic toggle gear selector. I prefer a lever, but I also prefer this over a twist knob. This is a little bit more intuitive. Storage in here, actually quite good. You could put two rectangular tissue boxes in here, and maybe even a third one if you stack them up just right. This is a nice big area to put anything that you need. You could even put a small person here if you wanted to, but that's not all. They've redesigned this console, and so down below it, there's actually a nice big storage area down there. Again, a purse, a big purse, a small backpack. Above my head, giving me a nice airy atmosphere is the panoramic roof. That whole front section opens up and uh, there is a cover that shuts. Driver controls, in addition to the paddle shifters, the drive mode selector down here, you bring that up on the screen. And what I will tell you is, as you look across the screen, you can set any of the drive modes the best part is that they stay where you put them. If I put this on sport mode, I get out, I go inside, I come out the next day, I turn the car on, it's still on sport mode. That's huge. A lot of cars out there, they, they just reset to whatever they want to be on every time you start the car. And so uh, I'm very thrilled about that. When it comes to driver controls, that makes me very happy. The same can be said for a lot of the driving assistance features. You press the button here and you go to the menu. And again, you go to things like lane keeping, lane change, all of that crap that I hate. I can turn it off and it stays turned off. Unlike some Volkswagens I've tested in the past, the default to on every time you start the car and you have to dig into the menu two layers deep to change that. Here, you have to dig in, you have to get into the menus, but you can set it and forget it. It stays the way you want it. That is worth something. Sitting in the second row, as you can see, I have got a ton of space back here. It feels like a living room. These seats are set for my height, about 5'9", with my boots on. I've got about eight inches ahead of my knees. I could have an eight-foot person sitting up here practically. I know they don't exist. Uh, and I would probably still have leg room back here. And the seating height is a little bit on the lower side. I would call it medium. This is not quite tall SUV land because we do have the lower roof. So it's a compromise, but it's still not uncomfortable. This seat does have enough side support that I don't feel like I'm sitting on a flat bench. Amenities back here, pretty nice. I've got vents at the back of the console keeping me nice and cool. It's over 100 degrees outside today. If it were cold, I've got heated seats back here. Down at the bottom of the console, you can see there is a AC outlet as well as USB ports for charging. Also over here, some nice sunshades keep you cool if you don't have extra tinted windows, which you would here in Arizona. Having the big glass roof over my head does give me some nice airy atmosphere as well. There's this fold down armrest right here, which is nice and tall. It matches the height of the armrest over here. And all of those soft trims we talked about up front flow to the backseat passengers as well. Some car companies cheap out for the second row. Now these seats, they do fold down in a 60-40 split, giving you a cavernous load area. It's mostly flat, although the second row kind of drops down just a slight bit. It is effectively a flat load space back there. Underneath that, I'm also happy to say, is a spare tire. Always something nice in an SUV where you might be going off in the mountains someplace, and if you go over a rock and cut a tire, if you don't have a real spare, chances are you're going to need a tow truck. And if you don't have cell service, well, you're SOL. So always glad to see a spare tire in the back so i'm very happy with this interior it's comfortable it's got a lot of room a lot of versatility because we don't have that third row we've got all of the space that goes with that larger third row almost and that cargo capacity back there is pretty good so i'm really happy with this interior and the fact that they've upgraded it and given it the kind of materials that actually back up the premium talk that volkswagen's always had it feels its price. This interior gets five out of five stars. When it comes to the user experience and infotainment system control center here, we always sort of have a separate conversation about that. 
Essentially what they've done is replaced a lot of hard controls here with a single touch screen. Below the touch screen there is some touch sensitive controls for temperature and for volume and down below it there's a number of jump buttons that you can go straight to certain menus and just use those hard controls so that you don't have to page through menus to get to certain things. And that's a good thing because the climate controls, for instance, let's say you want to adjust the fan. That's my biggest adjustment that I usually always have to make. I have to press the climate button, then I go to the climate menu, then I can adjust that fan speed. But at least they've given you the jump buttons so that you can skip a lot of the extra paging through menus. Still not my favorite layout, but it's better than it could be. Now the graphics here are very well done. It's got swipe controls. It senses the proximity of your hand. And as you go around and navigate things like the audio, it works very well. The backup camera is good. It doesn't have 360 degrees for this price, which uh, is a little bit of a letdown. So when it comes to features here, we have App Connect, which is wireless. That means Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, any other apps that you have, you can connect wirelessly to this. Bluetooth, of course, satellite radio. It has native nav on this particular trim grade and the audio quality is pretty good. So all of that stuff is good. What I don't like about it still is that the menus are not intuitive. You can't get there from here sometimes. So when it comes to rating this system, um, you know, it's got a lot of improvements, but there are quite a few things that they need to get right to make it easy to use when you're driving behind the wheel. It's just still a little bit too cumbersome. This system gets four out of five stars. All right, my friends, let's go for a drive. We're out here in the desert on my favorite back road, and so we can really sort of let this thing loose and see what it's all about. So first thing we're going to talk about is what's under the hood. For 2024, there's only one engine available here, the two liter turbocharged four cylinder. The V6 is gone. And so what they did do is they made this engine more powerful and they gave it more torque. So even though the horsepower is still a little bit less than the old V6, it has more torque and more usable range. And so the question I always like to ask is how does it go? got a nice sound and 60 it does have a nice sound um, so of course this sounds a little bit artificial it's on sport mode and it changes the engine sound all of the drive modes change the engine sound in different degrees and so some of that sound is well created but it sounds good so it has an eight-speed automatic transmission with the new more powerful and more refined four cylinder and the nice thing about it is it has a level of playfulness and refinement that some of the butt ax cycle four cylinders from Volkswagen in the past few years have not had it really wants to please and so I don't really miss the V6 here very much it's got a nice tone it's got a nice personality and like I say, it's just a little bit more refined than some of the four cylinders that were designed to save fuel uh, have been from Volkswagen in a while. And that gets us to the conversation about fuel economy. This is rated at 19 city, 26 highway and 22 MPG combined. Mm, mm -mm, no, in my week with it, I got about 17. And well, it's a little four cylinder engine, cattle guard, driving a big, heavy SUV. And so small turbocharged engines, big heavy vehicles, they drink fuel, especially when you use the power. But it sure does work well. <laughs> Not the most fuel efficient thing out there. So if you're looking for that to be a benefit to going to just a four cylinder, uh, you're SOL, but it's gonna make you smile. So I'm happy about the fact that even though we've only got one engine choice in this vehicle now, it's, it's a good one. And as I mentioned at the outset, it still tows 5,000 pounds. It's still usable as a large SUV in that way. So the powertrain, while some may be disappointed that the old VR6 is gone, um, I'm not really. This is not so bad. It really isn't. Uh, so this powertrain gets four out of five stars. Just like the full-size Atlas, this is based on the MQB 
architecture from Volkswagen. The platform architecture is the same as you're going to find from the base golf all the way up to everything else, almost, with some changes here and there. And so basically what that means here is we've got a McPherson strut front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension, and essentially the same German feel that you're going to find even in a GTI. And I said that when I first test drove the Atlas when it came out some years ago was that it feels like a really big GTI. And, and so it's got that sort of supple, tight, tautness that you get from German tuning. And it feels solid, it feels quality, it feels premium. And it's quiet, 55.8 decibels at 70 miles an hour on our road test and so it's got a nice quiet hush to it and you can throw it into a corner these big 20 inch tires 255 section give it a nice give it a nice cornering feel it really does drive like a big giant a little bit heavier uh, gti so um, i absolutely love the chassis on this it feels solid around town going over bumps potholes speed bumps the speed humps on my neighborhood it passes all of those tests with flying colors no clunks and you can toss it into a corner. Woof. I'm happy with this chassis. It feels like a big GTI. I think that's really the big takeaway. It gets five out of five stars. All right, my friends, we've had a good look at it inside and out. We've taken it for a drive and talked about all of the nuts and bolts. Now the question is, is it worth the money? Is it a good value? Well, here's the thing about the Atlas Cross Sport. Unlike the larger Atlas three row, the two row version is almost the same size. It's almost a large SUV. There aren't that many two row large SUVs out there on the market to compare this to. Most of the things that are directly in its price crosshairs and its size and footprint crosshairs are three rows. So there's that. So when you look at just, I just want a nice big sort of luxury premium two row SUV, not a lot of competitors out there. And because they've done a lot of these nice upgrades for this year, I would call this vehicle a little bit more premium in level than it was just last year. And so I like the changes that they've made, the styling changes, of course, it wasn't ugly before. And the interior though, that's where the big news is, obviously a much more premium interior. And that is something I have complained about on Atlas models before was the cheap plastic interior. They fixed that and they brought up the technology the new engine, um, while it's not the old VR6, it's plenty powerful, it's plenty drivable, and it's got a pretty nice sound on sport mode. So all of the changes that they've made here, in my opinion, have elevated the game. Now, the price on this one, $48,000, it's a premium price tag, and you can spend more, you can spend less. This starts out around $37,000 for the base model. And so um, when I look at things like warranty, when I look at competitors out there that you can also compare this, um, you, are, you are paying a premium here. There's no doubt about that. I put value here at four out of five stars. When you put that with everything we've already talked about, we are at a total review score of four and a half out of five stars. Very good. I am impressed. I like it. I like it much better than last year's model by a long shot. In fact, it goes on my buy it list. Yeah, I would buy this totally. If I were looking for a two row large premium SUV, uh, this is definitely a deal if you're comparing it to anything above it like Audi, BMW, Mercedes, maybe Infiniti, Lexus even. Um, you get a lot of the same feel, the lot of the features, but not the price. Um, so yeah, it goes on my buy list and uh, Volkswagen's haven't always been on the buy list lately for a lot of different reasons, but they're sort of getting it back. And I think that's really the new story here with this vehicle is uh, they've been listening to customers and they've been putting the upgrades back in and there you go. So if you like what we do, you can see our latest video right there or better yet subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there and stay informed of everything we do. Either way, stay tuned.